I'm Allie. I work at Woodlawn Library, which is one of the Halifax Public Libraries. I'm hoping that you'll do a craft with me today. Halifax Public Libraries is doing a series called Kickstart Creativity, where we challenge you to make something from objects and supplies that you already have in your own house. So you can try to make something beautiful or useful or just really cool. Anything that just uses your own creativity and stuff you already have. What we're making today is called a Soctopus or a Sock Octopus. Now my other goal with these videos is to get people to do some intergenerational crafting. And that means that my crafts are supposed to be good for any age range. So I've been testing them with my family because they live all across Canada and we really like doing crafts. But unfortunately, we can't be together in person as often as we'd like. So the youngest member who does crafts with us is four. And my mother, who's in her 70s, also likes to do crafts. So as far as I know, this craft should work for anyone in that age range. Sometimes you might need a little help. Sometimes it might be a bit easy. Maybe you can help someone else. But ideally, it's still a good craft for everyone basically at any time in their lives. I really like doing this with my friends and my family so I can be near my loved ones even if I can't be, you know, literally near them. So, as I mentioned, we're going to be trying to use stuff that you already have at home. So I'm hoping that you'll have stuff that's similar to what I have here. First thing is you need a sock. Now, this could be a sock that you've lost the pair to. It could be a sock that has holes in it as long as the holes are from basically here down. You want to make sure that the toe part is all intact, but a hole anywhere else would not be a big deal. They can be a sock that are, you know, sometimes socks are really itchy. So if they're an itchy sock that you're a kid or that you don't want to wear, that's perfect. This one actually, even though it looks like a very large sock, is my husband's sock and I'm using it because he has ginormous feet and this is too small for him. So it actually happens to be a lovely fresh new sock. But the ones I used over the weekend when I was doing them with my family were my old grubby socks. I just didn't really want you to see my old grubby socks. Any sock will do, is the point. The next thing you need is some kind of filling. So I have some cotton batting, kind of fluff, that my dogs pulled out of some of their toys, and that's what I'm going to use because I suspect that this octopus will eventually belong to my dogs. But if you don't have that, probably you have some kind of dry goods. So what I've got here is some rice, just regular dry, uncooked rice. You can also use any kind of lentil, bean. Uh, my niece ended up using popcorn, of course, just the kernels, and anything like that will work. It's important if you're using something like that, dried beans or something, if you have a funnel, it's gonna be a lot easier. It's okay if you don't, you can definitely do it without that, but you might wanna put down a garbage bag or something because it might get a little messy. The only other stuff that you need is some kind of elastic. So I've got a couple options here. I have some old hair elastics and I've got some like rubber elastics, like the ones that we often used to use at the library to put your name on the books. You can also, if you don't have any kind of elastic, just use a piece of yarn or a ribbon or string, basically anything that you can hold something together with. I'll show you what I mean when we get there. The other thing that you're gonna want is a Sharpie or some kind of permanent marker. And finally, a pair of scissors. So this is a super easy craft. We're just gonna get started right away. So what I'm gonna do to start is take my sock, my husband's sock, and I'm just gonna fill the bottom so that it makes kind of a ball here. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna use the stuffing because my dogs would definitely eat the dry rice. And I'm just gonna stick my hand in and put it all the way down to the bottom. Oh, and I thought that was gonna be enough stuffing, but I think I would like my octopus head to be a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna grab a bit more stuffing. Luckily, my dogs destroy a lot of toys, so I have a lot of this. If I were doing this with the dried beans, lentils, rice, etc., I'd be doing the same thing, but funneling the stuff in, or if I didn't have a funnel, I'd be taking a handful, putting it all the way in the sock before letting go, so that hopefully all of it ends up in the sock, ideally. That way it's gonna be a little bit messier, but at least it's just dry food, so you're not gonna have any stains or anything like that. So, I'm pretty happy now with that head. So I'm gonna stick with it like that. Oh, maybe I like it better that way. No, this way. So once I've got that, I'm gonna take my elastic and I think I'll just use this 
rubber one because it matches best. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to use it just like if I were doing a hairstyle and I needed to hold the hair up. So you put it around once, then you spin the elastic over so that the back piece goes over the front. Then you stick the bottom piece through again, spin the elastic over, and back through again. And we're just going to do this as many times as it takes to make sure it's nice and tight. So, that looks pretty good. Now, if I had the dried beans, rice, etc. in here, I'd want to make sure this was extra, extra tight so that none of it falls out. It's not as big a deal with the cotton batting because it's not going to come out in little bits. But essentially, there we go. We've got that ready. So as long as I feel like that's pretty stable, which I do, we're ready for the next step. So octopuses have eight legs. Octo means eight. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut right up the front of the sock. So this is the part that would run kind of down the top of your foot and uh, up to your ankle in the front. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut until a little bit underneath the elastic so that it doesn't kind of pull back under the elastic and have everything fall apart. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut down to do that. And as you can see, I'm just stopping maybe about half an inch from the top. You can see now, instead of being a tube, it's sort of one big piece. And then I'm going to flip it around to the back, and there's a line at the back that goes, it would go right up the back of your leg, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So the scissors I'm using are fabric scissors. Growing up, my mom always had two pairs of scissors in the house. We had regular scissors and fabric scissors, and we were definitely not supposed to use the fabric scissors for anything other than fabric, and she would know if you did. So you had to be very careful with that. I always thought it was very silly, but now that I have fabric scissors, which my mother of course bought me because she's the kind of person who owns fabric scissors, if my husband tries to cut anything with the fabric scissors that is not fabric, I suddenly realized what she was talking about for all those years. Okay, so now we've got these two pieces. They're roughly equal, and now we have two of the eight legs. And what we're going to do to make eight legs is we're going to first hold it up like this so we have both pieces and we're going to cut down the same way but this is going to turn it from two pieces into four pieces. Just going to cut, cut, cut. Oh, keep spinning away on me. It's a bit harder to do this while holding it up. I would recommend having maybe a table or a surface of some kind to Hold this against while you're doing it. There we go. So now you can see we have four legs and then we're going to grab those two that we just cut on one side and we're going to cut them down again so that then they will go from two to four. There we go. This sock is actually a bit harder to work with than the ones I used on the weekend. I think because it's so new, it's still very elasticy, so it keeps trying to spring back into sort of a curl, which makes it a bit harder to cut into eight perfect pieces. Um, so if you get older socks, you might be in luck. That might be better. And I'll do the same thing with these two pieces. So these ones were the other kind of half of the sock, and I'm just going to cut them down the middle, so we'll go from two to four pieces again. Oh, and it's really springing back, making it more of a problem for me. So while you're doing this, you might notice that some of your pieces have kind of the, the foot part, the back of your foot part on them. That's gonna make them not perfectly straight lines, but that is no big deal. You're not even gonna notice once it's done. And just about done this one. There, so as you can see, mine are not all the same size. That is not a big deal. But let's just make sure we have the right number of legs for an octopus. One, two, three, four, five. 
six, seven, eight. Eight legs, that is perfect. So the next thing we wanna do is I think the most important part, and that is to take our Sharpie and we're gonna draw a little face on the front of it. So whichever side you want to be the front, this was the side I liked better, I'm just gonna draw a little face and you can put whatever you want on your face. On its face, sorry. Probably don't put Sharpie on your face. All right, so I'm just gonna draw one, two, two little eyes, and then he's a happy octopus, so he's gonna have a big smile. There you go, so you can hopefully see there. I know it's kind of a darker color. Lighter colors are better for these because you can see them a bit better, but hopefully you can still see his little smile. If I wanted to, I could give him a little mustache. Now we've got a mustache, I could give him glasses, I could put hair on him, whatever I wanted, or her. I could give him eyebrows. In fact, I think I will give him eyebrows. There, he's a very hairy fellow. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just to hide the elastic there, I think I'm gonna put a little bow tie on him. Now, if I have ribbon at home, I would use ribbon. I don't have any ribbon, but I do have some yarn from the bowl that I made last week. So I'm just gonna cut a small piece and I'm gonna wrap it around the elastic and I'm gonna tie it in a bow so that he ends up with like a little bow tie. Now, when I was done making mine with my nieces and nephews, a couple of them had used white socks and they decided they were going to color the whole thing in, in different colors and give it polka dots and stripes, which was really fun. But you don't have to do that, it's up to you. There, it's a bit lopsided, but you can see he's got a little bow tie on him and he is all done. Now the cool thing, if you've used lentils or the dried beans, rice, etc., is that they end up being quite heavy and if they're heavy, then you can kind of sit it on the edge of something and it sort of stands up, which is very cute. Um, doesn't happen so much with the cotton batting, but I still think he's quite lovely and I know my dogs are gonna be really excited about him. Actually, I'm super excited because I just ordered a box of tiny squeakers, a whole bunch of them, there's like 25 in the package, and I ordered them and hopefully when they come in, I can make toys like this, but put a squeak in it. And then I can stop buying expensive dog toys for my dogs because they destroy them in 10 seconds anyway. So hopefully they will like this shape. They very much liked the other one that I made this weekend. I was going to show you that as an example to begin, but they ate it before I could. Um, but this is my Soctopus. I would love to see a picture of your Soctopus if you make one, or if you make a family of Soctopus. Soctopus eye, Soctopus is, I don't know, bunch of Soctopus. If you want them to have shorter tentacles, you could cut these off, but I think my dogs are gonna really like how long they are. And of course, it doesn't have to be a dog toy. My nieces and nephews and even my mom and dad who made them with us, they're using them just for decoration or for their own toys. Just everything I own becomes a dog toy because my dogs are not especially well-trained. Anyway, thank you so much for doing this craft with me. I'm hoping that next week I'll be doing another sock related stuffed animal. It's going to be a bunny. So I'd love to see you guys for that one. And I hope you guys have a great day.